right, guys. We got another uh, we got another project. A little slightly different. This is um, one of my work trucks. This is a 2015 Ford F550. Uh, it is a V10, four-wheel drive. Has the uh, the extra payload package, so it puts it at 19,500 GVW. Been a very good truck. It was a uh, a plow salt truck. Was ordered that way new. Um, we bought it right with um, a nine foot salter and a uh, I don't even remember what blade we bought with this. I think it was just a nine foot straight. But uh, at any rate, we don't do snow anymore. Um, it still has the, uh, the the salting harness. Salter harness been pulled off. It does still have the plow mount and that wiring harness just in case. But um, been a good truck. We had to. We've had to do very little. Um, the truck itself is in very good shape. has 115,000 miles on it. Um, it is starting to show some rust here and there on the frame, but not a lot. And I think that's largely because I was pretty, um, you can see the, the flatbed is rusted pretty heavily. The frame itself isn't bad. Surface rust, other than the axle, the axle and the drive shaft, but you know, that's okay. Um, but I, I fluid filmed the heck out of this thing right from the start. So. Um, you can see it has these, um, minimizer fenders and, uh, yeah, what we're doing is we're getting rid of this flatbed. It's going away. Um, she's, uh, she's pretty crusty. I mean, I know that's mostly the bulkhead, but to be honest with you, the, uh, the rest of it is rusty too. Um, it's just, uh, it's past its prime guys. Um, the cross members are, are okay still. I'm going to sell this bed, to be honest with you. Somebody will put this on a truck. Um, somebody who wants to put the effort into it, maybe sandblast and paint it, um, put a new deck on it, but the, uh, the cross members are starting to deflect and the deck, it needs a new deck. The deck is heaved and you can see where it popped a couple, uh, um, a couple tongue and, tongue and groove boards. And to be honest with you, I am just not, I'm just not willing to put the time and effort into redoing this thing. Um, by the time I do all the work to fix that, the hours of labor to do a new deck, to buy a new bulkhead, um, and to sandblast and paint and all that good stuff. Um, yeah, I've got a new bed, um, identical, same exact manufacturer. So everything is exactly the same. And being a flatbed, it's a really easy change out. I shouldn't say really easy, but mostly easy change out. We're going to get rid of the minimizer fenders um, at the same time. They've they've been they're tight now. I finally got them tight, but um, by the time if I were to even be able to get these off, yeah, we're, we're not we're not dealing with that. And honestly, without being a salt truck anymore, I don't really need the uh, I don't really need the minimizer fenders. My trucks run um, they run April through December mid-December and that's it this truck's parked in a barn after that so uh there is no reason to be putting to be putting these back on and deal with that paint so what we got to do is obviously we got a wiring harness somewhere that's going to get clipped because and that's been failing on us so that's got to get redone but we're going to torch off those u-bolts so there's a set of u-bolts on the front and then we've got this plate right here um which to get it off we're just going to cut torch it off and then we'll deal with getting it cleaned up tighter a little later as you can see the minimizer fenders are going to come right off with the bed so we don't have to do anything with those and then most of the work is back here uh actually just had this this back plate redone this past year um but we are going to have to do we're going to have to cut that free right there you know most of this plate is is welded to the frame but it is welded to the body there and then we've got some cross welds there um and then We'll see what happens. I, it doesn't look like it's welded on the inside. I think, uh, you know, it is. It is, of course. Um, anyway, we'll figure, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. We may have to get up in there with a torch and, and do some sneaking and do some cutting, but um, the back plate will stay and then we'll uh, we'll just set a new bed on and uh, um, decide whether we're, what we're doing for lights. I haven't quite decided. Um, that part yet we'll figure it out so let's get after it all right well it's easy enough got everything torched off there's a couple bolts still in 
I think if we do some knocking around. Um, I know at the back, I know this side is broke through because it popped. This side hasn't quite popped, um, but it's close. And I think a little, I think a little, re I heard it creaking. So I think a little reefing with the machine and it'll pop off. So I got to get some pallets or something set up. So I've got something to set this thing onto and then, uh, and then we'll get after it. There's a new one, by the way. Same, identical, Parkhurst, simple, flatbed. You don't even want to know what they cost these days, but for just a flatbed, but regardless, it's here. Rather than just setting this thing on here, I'm going to do a little bit of cleaning up um, and probably some greasing, possibly. But regardless, some cleaning up on these frame rails. Let me pull you out so you can see it. And we're going to grind off all this slag, get that all cleaned up and prepped so that's ready for a weld um, rather than having to do it when it's underneath the truck. Um, and uh, boy, I got to be honest with you. This truck is on its original shocks and I'm real tempted to not put this bed on until I put a set of shocks on it because good Lord, especially this one with the cover and the exhaust right there, it'd be so easy. And for a relatively inexpensive set of shocks, I feel like that's a no brainer. So I think we're going to do that. Um, the old oak boards were actually in good shape, but I'm going to, uh, you know, I, I bought new ones with the body. So we'll go ahead and uh, go ahead and get that rope off of there. Um, we'll go ahead and put new ones on and you know, they use these quarter bar spacers because the frame strengthening plates, you know, end here. So they actually did it right and they had the, the oak cut. So they had a piece of oak on top of this stiffener and then oak on the bottom and a quarter piece of bar on top on this rear section to space it out. Right. So, so they did a nice job when they did it, the body company did. So I'm good after doing some of this work and we'll get everything prepped, I think. And then, uh, and then we'll call it good for today. And after I get some, some shocks, we'll, uh, I think we could do some prepping on the wiring too, to be honest with you and, uh, and get that. So it's, so it's close and ready just to maybe put a plug on. We'll see. Well, as always, everything's a rabbit hole for me. Um, you know, I couldn't leave well enough alone. I took the, got the hammer out and then I got the needle scaler out and we cleaned everything up and you know we got more of the frame and we got springs and yeah this frame is in you know for us for a nine-year-old michigan salt truck you know this frame is actually pretty good but um i, I just can't live with myself if i don't paint it so um what i'm gonna do is uh it's supposed to rain maybe late tonight and tomorrow um, so I, you know, I, I guess I digress, backtrack. I power washed it once I was done with a, with a narrow, um, I think like a 20 degree or a 15 degree, um, nozzle. And what we didn't get with the needle scaler, we, we got with that, you know, cleaned up the top of the fuel tank inside all of these, you know, these spring stops and hangers that are notorious for, for keeping stuff. So, um, yeah. It's been power wash now. And then uh, I did get the shocks are off, ordered new ones. They're, uh, I'll put those, this is Thursday. I'll put those on on Monday once I go in and grab them. But um, regardless, here we are with a frame that needs to be painted. So um, so that's what we're going to do. I did uh, I did grind off all the slag. I got into that C-chain a little bit, but that's fine. It'll, it'll get welded. And um, I did prep, you know, and, and bevel everything ahead of time. Obviously, it's going to get painted, so we'll just take a flap wheel back to it when we uh, before we go to set the body on. Um, 
pulled my, uh, this was my feed for my trailer light. I didn't unscrew it from the terminals because there's already splices in here and I want to, I want to redo this and make it right. And then we've got our feeds for, uh, for the lights, which I, I haven't decided yet, to be honest, what I want to do. And I probably should, I probably should figure that out right now. Really? Yeah, I should. All right, well, there's chassis saver. And, uh, yeah, it turned out half decent. It's just chassis saver on a, on an old frame, so nothing too fancy, but, uh, chassis saver likes to cure with some moisture, so if it rains tonight, that'll be just fine for it. Well, it is a, another ridiculously beautiful day in February. I don't know how warm it is, but if it's not 60, it's about 58. Beautiful sunshine, a little breezy, but I just went out and raked mulch out of the yard from snow plowing. Good Lord. Anyway, so regardless, we don't need the furnace on today. Uh, barn's open. Pulled the truck in last night. Let it dry out of the rain. So our chassis saver is all tacked up good. Um, I, I probably will put a coat of... Um, I'll probably use that stuff sitting right there. Um, I like that product. It's a Nason product. It's a 1K single part um, just satin black chassis paint. So we'll top coat all this with that. Um, but we'll wait, and that way we'll do the frame of the flatbed as well and any kind of welding and whatnot that we have to do because there will be some of that that way we're not rattle canning everything so we got a couple things we got to come up with and i went shopping today um went to a different truck parts supplier than i usually go to because of the area i was in and oh my goodness i found my new favorite place they have so much they have everything i could ever need and i don't have to order it i can just go pick it up they'll actually deliver um too so there's that but what I wanted was, I didn't want the, I don't even have them over here, but the, you know, the groat style, um, you know, rectangular Jeep style, if you will, just standard old truck parts, stop, turn, tail, reverse light combos. I hate those things. I've dealt with them forever. The mounts are never sturdy. They don't look nice. They don't last. They're just a pain in the butt. So I picked up a set of these. Um, they're not even very expensive but they're a, uh, they're a buyer's product. Buyer's has gotten really good these last few years on some of the cool stuff they make at a good price. Um, so what we're going to do, because this isn't a dump, this doesn't see a lot of, um, you know, it's not going to have a lot of activity here. There, I restarted the video for you after I cleaned off my camera lens a little bit. But um, um, I think we're going to direct weld right to right somewhere in there we got to leave room because the, the mud flap as much as i like a mud flap close to the tire i don't think they're going to be able to be based on where cross members are at on this particular bed um so i want to be clear of those but um also i want to be inboard i like these because they don't stick out too far so the guys won't use them as a step on the edge um and i want them inboard i don't want them way up in like that but I want them in by a few inches. The bed does overhang ever so slightly. I mean, it's not much. It's it's like right just a couple inches. But I want it inboard so it's not doesn't end up used as a step. Because if it could be used as a step, it will be. So I like the way this looks. Nice clean look. Um, we'll get them welded on. And then obviously I got the requisite LED. So we're gonna do a, a red stop turn tail on the outside and a reverse light on the inside to stay DOT legal. Um, I haven't decided yet if I'm going to put this junction box on. I love these, these junction boxes. I think they're a buyer's product too, to be honest with you. Uh, no label. I don't remember. But anyway, um, I don't know that I need to though. I mean, this is the feed I cut that goes to our trailer plug and it's already split. Honestly, it's got these plugs that I'm going to get rid of, but, um, it's already got a factory split. So I, I haven't decided what I'm going to do there. I'm going to do some testing, make sure everything works. And then we'll make that call. And the last thing I got to figure out is a license plate. Um, I don't, you know, I thought about we could we could weld a bracket to the bottom of this light, but we could also do something just as easily on this back hitch plate. All right, so we're back at it again with uh, Amazon's cheapest mag drill, which you know does the job. Um, I decided this is the way to go. I do want the plate 
on this this whole rear plate. Um, I don't like the idea of just welding bolts. For one thing, I don't think they're going to end up in the right spot because it's really hard to clamp a bolt in place in the right position. So what I have done is I've marked them, and then I used just a small drill bit as essentially a center punch. Um, center punched it and then did that. So now I've got a nice pocket to locate my mag drill. And now I'm going to drill some 5 16 holes. And then I think I'm just going <clears> to, <throat> you know, we can just use a bolt, but I'm going to tack weld that bolt from the backside. Um, just a quick tack just to hold it from spinning. And that way if it needs to, and I'll, and I'll probably try to be smart about where I tack it so that if I need to grind it off with the bed on someday I can. Um, but that way when we change plates or whatever else. I shouldn't have to change plates very often. I do need to change it right now because it's destroyed, so I need to get a new plate when I restore, when I renew this truck this spring. But um, at any rate, we're going to drill these four, and then I'm going to drill some quarter 20 holes for my courtesy lamp, and uh, then we'll be in good shape. We'll get our bolts welded in, and then we get everything painted um, once the bed goes on, and then we can move on to our, our light buckets. All right, there's our finished product. Very happy with that. You can see we're welded on the inside, um, nice and clean. Um, and again, this plate, uh, all right, bring it back there, guys. This plate is not, uh, not gonna last, but there we go. We're not gonna put uh, nuts on, because obviously we gotta paint this and do a bunch more work. But that is a nice looking hitch plate. All right. Light boxes are welded on. Yeah, we even used a level. Um, nothing more I hate than and those things are solid. Um, just welded beads up and down the sides. We didn't do anything up top. Um, and uh, yeah, because that way we can get to it if we need to cut it out. The top would be a pain to get a, a wheel to, to grind that off. And I just lined them up with the back of this C channel they did for the body. That is where my bead will be. That were the rear weld for the body so that way we're clear i'm not inhibiting that anyway we're inset here about seven eight inches far enough in to protect the light box but not too far that you can't see the uh see the lights from the rear of the truck so i am quite happy with that i did uh um before i welded these on i did drill a hole in the bottom for a grommet wires are gonna We'll splice onto those, build our harness now, come up through, so it'll just be nice and neat coming up through. Um, and uh, we'll include in that harness the reverse light and then a feed up for the markers on the flatbed. Well, I'm working on this wiring. I've disconnected it from, from the cross member here so I can get to everything. And, um, you know, I've got my, my left turn, my left side feed here, and my right side feed here. I've isolated all the wires. I know which one's which. Same thing with the feed for the um, trailer harness slash um, body harness. The issue I'm having is that everything works except reverse lights. Um, they haven't worked on this truck for, for some time. And I'm not getting any signal on either the, the trailer circuit wire or on my feeds to each side. So uh, verified fuses were good. So I'm gonna guess that it's a um, it's a fault in the body control module. Something's up there. So uh, I'm not gonna dig any further into that. That's a that's a dealer visit. So that being said, uh, it is time. First, I want to get my my trailer and body harness done. Um, it's my trailer connector right there. I'm gonna take off that gob of wires, and I've got a short piece here somewhere of some nice heavy trailer wire. We're gonna do some splices here and then we'll wire it into that, give ourselves some nice slack. So if we wanna pull that through, we can. It's always a pet peeve of mine. I wanna be able to pull it through to work on it. So we'll undo the two bolts, pull that through and, and work on it rather than standing on my head underneath the truck. So we're gonna extend it so we can do that. Uh, make some nice clean, tight splices and get that done. And then, then we can reset the harness and measure the lengths we need to build our short little harnesses to go up into these boxes. I'll bring it back. All right, well, there we are. That's uh, this phase complete. Obviously the reverse lights aren't gonna work because of that issue with the BCM or whatever it is. So 
So, but they are wired. So once that's corrected, they they should work. So, um, but uh, brakes, turns, tails, all that good stuff is all operational, um, separate from the body. So the body's ready to go on, and then we've just got our our little feed here. That feeds hot. That's our our feed up to the to the flatbed for those seven lights that are on that. So that being said, that's it for this phase. Next will be the body going back on. You saw me struggle to get it mounted, but uh, it is. And we've got our U bolts front and mid. Um, and then I'll show you what I did back here. Used a couple of chain binders down to the ICC bar, and that pulled us nice and tight, no air gap. And now we're gonna. They are weld on both sides. At that point, the bed is on. It's done. Um, and then we've got miscellaneous stuff like mud flaps and um, front bulkhead, headache rack, whatever you want to call it, and tarp. And then uh, make sure the sideboards are fit and wiring and paint and all kinds of good stuff. I've marked them see my paint marks I've got them all lined up where I want them um, I'm gonna pull these out of the way we'll grind everything down get some bare metal we'll weld them and we're gonna call it good that way then I get this bulkhead set up in the pockets up here and then I can use these um, these brackets here that will have to be drilled slash welded whatever we decide to do we'll get it up in the air and see what we got to do first so that's the next step once that is done um, I got to drill mud flap mounting holes um, we got to put the shocks on. I've got those now. And then I've got the, uh, the side racks are out in my pickup getting, they're getting covered in snow right now. So that's a pain in the butt. Um, but at any rate, um, we will, uh, we'll get going on that stuff. All right. So this is what I'm doing with the fuel filler neck. I didn't like how it was mounted before. It also was really scaled up. So I had to take the needle scaler to it and clean it up. It'll get painted obviously. So I ordered one of these little brackets, found it on Amazon, and it, it fit right, but I had to modify the holes. And it's just not as, it's, it's not as thick as I'd like it to be. I don't have enough hose length to come out and mount it flush. And I don't really want it flush like that because it's gonna get caught. So I want it to be inboard a little bit, but that puts it a little too tight and it, um, it, sorry. I don't have a good flange. I mean, I've got a cross member right there, but then I can only put one bolt through and it's just not gonna be very strong. So, 
instead. I found this little piece of scrap metal. I marked the flange and drilled it. Now I can weld that to the cross member right where I want it and then just bolt through on either side with some quarter 20s and I think we'll have the rigidity we're looking for. So I'll get that done. All right, that turned out really nice. Much happier with that than the, I mean, it's not the strongest thing in the world, but it is just a, it's just a fuel filler neck. It's, it's pretty stout. Um, that's what we ended up with. Um, cap comes off nice. It does, that bracket does provide a nice angle, so hopefully it makes fuel filling a little easier. Always challenge on chassis cabs, and um, yeah, we even got the cap retainer bolted in. So that's ready for paint. We're good to go. And not gonna hit anything if, it, if something rubs up tight against it. We're, we're just inboard a flatbed wall. All right, on to mud flaps. So. I bought some angle iron um, type pre-drilled mud flat brackets and they would work, but I don't need angle iron in this case. I have a cross member that's about six or eight inches behind the rear of the tire. Um, and I like a mud flap that stays pretty tight to a tire. I like the looks and obviously it's more effective. So um, I'll, I've got a nice big cross member here that just has to be drilled. now. That means I gotta drill it, so that kind of sucks, but that's life. Um, what I elected to do though is that those brackets, because I'm not gonna use them, they're angle, I'll save them for another project. Um, I bought some big fender washers like you would normally do on mud flaps, but they like to pull out. It's a pain in the butt. You can buy brackets like this, but you know, I was at TSC and I was picking up some other stuff, and I'm like, just buy some, ga some galvanized, you know unistrut type stuff and uh, so what I've done is I've marked the holes I want that way I don't have to at least I've only got to drill the cross members I don't have to drill and, and make brackets or anything else so this way now I can take and I can clamp these I'll cut the the edges off that I don't need and then we'll clamp them into place on the cross member right where I want them I'll mark the holes get them drilled and then uh, once paint's done we're ready to bolt the mud flaps on Easy peasy. All right, so the bulkhead's on, and the way this setup works, you can see there's the tool racks. They fit right behind the eye pack there. Perfect little spot. Kind of fills that gap real nice. You can see we've got these two blanks. They're not drilled all the way through the sheet metal, but they're in the support. Um, and what those are meant to do is to be bolt holes. We've got matching bolt holes in these supports. So I'm gonna use the bolts there to save me some painting. And I'm gonna, so I'm gonna punch those, looks like three eighths holes out. And then here at the bottom, I've already marked, you probably can't see my mark, but I've marked that and I'm gonna weld to um, that front plate. I'm gonna, we'll get everything squared up and get both of them in place and weld in one shot all clamped in um and i think previously we're gonna do some checking but i think they gave me some c channel and what that's intended to do is to go weld again to this support bracket and go from the very front that front cross member we've already welded to but to tie back to this cross member so we'll do that i like that idea i think they've got me body company was was sharp and they've got some c channel already pre-cut um, especially since we're hauling tools up there, we're adding a lot of weight to that bulkhead. So we need that extra support. Otherwise we're putting all the weight on this relatively thin, looks like eighth inch front channel. And that is just too much, not gonna work. So we'll get to drilling. All right, so ready to weld now. Got the bulkhead bolted in, got everything ground, we're ready for a weld there. And on the inside of this, connecting the C channel, um, and then, uh, we're ground and clamped in place back here on that second cross member. And what we're going to do is, um, before we tack everything in place, we're going to use a square to make sure that the bulkhead is square to the flatbed. So let's get to welding. Okay. Bulkheads on. We'll weld it up. And she's sturdy. Moving the whole truck. So, 
that. Um, I think the last thing I've got to do is uh, make my wire connection. Hmm, looks like Parker's left me a handy harness right there, and I've got a handy harness right here. So we're gonna do two uh, two quick Western Unions, and then we're gonna we're gonna pull uh, we're gonna pull all the lights off the plates. Um, any little bit of masking, which basically I think is just going to be the reflectors, um, and then we'll throw a we'll throw a cloth over the the eye pack and the, um, the cab a little bit, a little bit of paint prep, and then we are going to shoot two different paints. To be perfectly honest, we're going to start with some one K chassis paint. That's going to be on the truck frame. Um, the, probably the back plate, light boxes, all that stuff that is going to get dingy and dirty. Do a nice satin black on that. And then, um, and then we'll do, we'll do a little bit of quick sanding. We're going to scuff that real quick and then, uh, repaint the bed because, you know, in transport, you can see these things get scuffed. They're all strapped down to a you know, to a, to a low boy when they ship them, they get welded on then when they get installed. So, um, we're not going to go crazy, but we're going to put a coat of, coat of gloss black on the outside. Okay. Bring it back right before paint. So I've, you see, we're still drying in a couple spots. The wax and grease remover is, but otherwise I have scuffed and masked everything. All of our our wire harnesses are taped off. All of our reflectors, our bolts, these threads we want to protect. All that's done. Everything scuffed that I'm going to scuff. I, I didn't do anything with the, the bulkhead. We're not painting that whole bulkhead. It's just going to get scratched up anyway. That's a waste of time. Wasted resources. We don't need to do that. But otherwise, everything's ready. So I'm going to start mixing. Well, the first one doesn't need mixing at all. This, uh, I can't really read it because I use it for it, but this chassis black is, that satin black is ready to shoot right out of the can. As it says, stir before use, chassis black, ready to spray. Love that. And then we've just got some, uh, some single stage enamel there. I had, oh, I got time we mix it I probably got two two cans worth of paint which should be plenty to do what we got to do we can probably do it in one to be perfectly honest um, so we might have a little bit left at the end but um, that's what we're shooting so let's get after it
all painted up. Lights are back in. Paint turned out good. Single stage is easy. Mud flaps turned out awesome. Perfect, perfect distance back. Perfect distance off the ground. We got room for uh, suspension sag. Love those light boxes. Love the placement of those. Perfect. Love the welded studs and welded nuts on everything on the back plate. That way it's nice and easy every time. Paint turned out pretty fair. So we're gonna let that set up and uh, come back in a day or two and do some sideboards and this truck is done. Okay, we're back at it on the F550. I feel like it's been a uh, it's been a round robin of projects here for me in this barn in the last month as I flip flop back and forth from trailers to trucks to truck cabs to cars to you name it. But anyway, the F550 is back in probably for the last time. So you can see we got everything else done. I'll do an overall recap of this thing once I get it out, hopefully later this afternoon. But you can see that I've taken the old sideboards, I've disassembled them. Uh, I am reusing the stakes because someone went through, one of my guys obviously, and did a did a pretty fair job of, of reaming these down to fit in a stake bed pocket. So uh, there's no reason to change those. They're not cracked. The, they are treated, but they're two by four, so they're not super heavy. These things, I mean, this is probably like 400 pounds worth of treated lumber that was unnecessary. I'm going to replace it with about, you know, 140 pounds of non-treated lumber that will hold up just fine for our purposes. So um, what I am going to do is first I got to get a good measurement on where these need to be, and then I'm going to cut these down at the top. We're going to put a nice 45, put a miter on them so they're not sharp on the top. Um, so we'll cut those down. We're going to reuse some of the holes, but we'll have to drill at least one new one. And um, we are going to use all the pockets, but we're going to go to a single set of boards across the sides. So a 2x12 followed up by a 2x6 for about a, I mean, it's not a full 18 inches because dimensional lumber is not true. So um, it'll be somewhere in the neighborhood of, I don't know, 14 or 15 inches. But I think that's a good height and compromise of height and weight. And then the back's just gonna be a single two by 12. Same thing, we'll bevel all of these stakes and then we'll put a, uh, a 45, a miter cut on the back of that top two by six so we visually bring it down. That'll look nice. Um, we've got all our old stake rack hardware. We're probably gonna have extra because we went, we're going from six sideboards down to three. So we got plenty and I did uh, they use 7 16 or half-inch half inch hardware, which is insane. I don't know why we spent that much money on that hardware, but alas, we did. Um, so I'm going to 3 8 because that's plenty for what this is, and we're going to do all new. It's not galvanized. This stuff will be painted. Those were, are not going to rust away before the sideboards are junk or the truck is sold off. So we're going to spend the money on galvanized and deal with the pain in the butt the galvanized is so um so anyway we're gonna get them built real quick we're gonna get some handles and stuff we're not even gonna mount the handles until it's painted um no reason for that we got some some eye hooks for the tarp and uh yeah i'm gonna get after it all right well there is the the uh nearly finished product it's the the finished product that you're gonna see the only thing left is to paint these sideboards um and I just don't have time to do that. So I've got uh, I've got a guy that works for me who is gonna take care of that here probably next week or whenever it's warm again, like it is today. But that's something that can be done inside the shop um, on some sawhorses and, uh, and I don't have to take up the space in my barn. So, so there's the finished product I did. Like I said, I did a little miter bevel, whatever you wanna call it on the old, um, the old uprights, put a 45 there, took a quick, quick sand to everything. Um, got our hardware, we've got our tarp strap rings, we've got our hooks for the, stow the rope for the tarp. We got a brand new buyer's hand crank tarp on here. Um, got the tarp straps nice and crimped on so they don't go anywhere. 
um, and as long as people don't stretch them too tight, they'll last a year or two. Um, a good, good stove spot for them right there. That works out nicely. Um, got our, our stove hooks up here. Got the nice lock on that, uh, oop. Oop. Now I gone and done it. All right, let's try this. Get these hooked where I want. And it's a nice stowing handle, so just a cheap, uh, just a cheap buyer's tarp, but they work pretty good. It's the same tarp we have on all of our small dumps and all of our dump trailers. And you know, for 200 bucks, you can't beat it. Can't go wrong with that. So, yeah, guys, that's it. That's the. Uh, that's the bed replacement, flatbed replacement on this 2015 F550. She is hopefully got another nine or ten years of life in her, and uh, by that time, truck will have quarter million miles, and we'll send it on down the road. But uh, it's a great chassis still, so there was no reason not to replace that nasty looking flatbed and give the guys something that uh, that they can work with, and that looks nice going down the road. So. Um, and without being a salt truck anymore, I will, uh, you know, maybe have to paint this maybe one time. That's it. Um, unlike before where I have to paint it, uh, you know, every, every, uh, oh, probably about every year or two. Um, and yes, if you ask, I know I have the, uh, the mud flap anti-sail brackets on backwards. I am aware of that. It's the only way I can do it with the direction that the cross members are going without using spacers and doing all kinds of weird stuff. And I'm not, not going to do that. So, so that is how they're going to run. So just so you know, I am aware guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this little quick little, little project we got in and out and done and, uh, y'all take care. Have a great week.